Welcome back everyone, Stefan here, the French Cooking Academy, and this week it's all about braising. We're going to recap on some small techniques, huh? how to braise a simple uh, pork shoulder here. We're going to touch base on some simple trussing technique, but uh, the big thing this week, we're not going to be using any stock or wine for the braising. We're going to start to explore some different ways. We're going to be using cider, and to bring lots of taste, I'm going to use some apples, some mushrooms, and prunes that I have macerated in this amazing stuff, which is a chestnut and apple liqueur. <laughs> Sounds very good. Let's go. Now let's start by having a quick look at the ingredients and what we're going to be using. Now one of the uh, the thing I have got recently, I'm really breaking my head on uh, flavors because I'm realizing it more and more. I really, really enjoy something that has got real full flavor. And when you kind of make a roast or braise a piece of meat, it's always the same. It's always kind of stock and wine, right? And I thought, you know what, what can we do to kind of elevate that and take it to the next level a little bit? So for the ingredients we're going to be using, we're going to keep things very simple. So I've got one onion that I can rush, roughly chop in a mirepoix, two cloves of garlic, a bit of creme fraiche, a piece of thyme, a bay leaf, two apples. These are just simple oyster mushrooms. And of course, the prunes. Now the prunes are the things that's really gonna give you a lot of flavor because they're really, really succulent, they're very soft, but I've marinated those in this liquor. This is something from central France called Le Birlou. It is an amazing thing, which is basically apple and chestnut mixed together into a liquor. Right? And it is sweet and it is so amazing because that taste of apple with the chestnut will go perfectly with this kind of meat. So I hope that on this occurrence we're really going to get some real strong flavor going. So to start the recipe, we're going to start to see the trussing and the light stuffing I'm going to do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stuff this with some prunes and to make sure there's some taste into this. All right, so let's start with the prune. Uh, the prunes first. You buy them from a supermarket, they're in packets and they're just macerated in that liquor. This is how they look like. So how do you go about it? If you want, you can just place them like that, huh? if you can't be bothered, and then you're going to be rolling the stuff. But what you can do, if you have a large piece of meat like this, you see this is very, very thick, as you can see here. Well, you can basically take a knife like that, make some incisions, and you make basically these little pockets, and you're going to put your prunes in here. All right? So I'm going to put one here, I'm going to put one there, and so on and so forth. So all the idea, what I'm going to do is this little surprise prunes <laughs> inside my roast. And I'm, every time I've got a fixed space here, I'm going to add some in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I am done. So as you can see, I've got prunes in some cavities that I've done. And there's some natural spaces where I just put some prunes in here. Now, because it's very juicy, because they were marinated, and we're going to have to handle this by hand, I'm going to use a paper towel here and try to dry as much and to avoid that too many juices escape. Otherwise, it's going to be very slippery when we want to do that trussing. When I'm here, or what I'm going to do is a little bit of salt and a grind of pepper. Next, we need to truss this or attach it so that it's not one big piece like this. So look, what I'm going to do first is try to gather things like that. And I'm just going to try to roll it in a kind of a shape that looks like a kind of a roast. Okay, put it back on my plate that I've got here and then clean my board, and I'm going to try to do some trussing. All right, so for the trussing, we're going to be using uh, the typical butcher string. And just a word about trussing. If your roast or your piece of meat uh, is not looking perfect with all the string, it does not matter. At the end of the day, all what matters is that your piece of meat kind of holds in one pack, so when you cook it, it's not going to detach and go all over the place. That's the whole purpose, okay? The rest, is aesthetic. So for me here, basically, I want to go the simple way. All what I need is to have that piece of meat to stay kind of like this. I'm taking a long piece of string, you know, a good, a good meter, and I'm just going to put this under my roast here. I'm going to put my string here. And what I like to do is one by one kind of technique. Okay. So I'm just doing one. I'm going to do a simple knot here. To start, I put a bit of extra string, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to cut these and I'm going to cut this. All right, so look at this. Without being a professional butcher or anything like that, if you go bit by bit, you can get something that is more than acceptable. Now, I do have that little loose piece here, so I think 
I'm going to have to have a string going. This is the same process. You can take a string, you can put your roast on top of the string like this. And we're basically going to go over like that. And I'm just going to attach the same way. I'm going to attach my string at the bottom here uh, and make sure I make a knot. And this is optional. Uh, you don't really have to do it. This is for me just to make sure it's straight like this. Okay. I'm going to tie this up and that's it. I am done. Boom. And now for the browning of the meat, you're going to have all the utensils ready. I'm using a small tray, a piece of meat, a pair of tongs, a cast iron pot with a little bit of oil. Now what is braising by definition? To braise uh, in French cooking is something we've seen in our course and get started with French cooking. It is the action of cooking a piece of meat that has been previously seared on all sides. It's been colored and, it's been, and then you're going to have to cook it in a short amount of liquid, meaning it is not fully submerged. It is only barely submerged halfway through with liquid of any kind. It can be a stock, it can be wine, or it can be anything. Once the meat is cooked, you then create a sauce that is called the fond de braisage, the braising stock that happens at the end and that happened to become the sauce you're going to be serving with the meat. So by definition, it has to be seared before you cook the meat. So what we do, medium to high heat, nice sizzling oil and I'm just going to put my roast here, or sorry, my piece of meat and I'm going to color it without moving it on each side. Okay, so remember the order, you always brown the meat first before you put the garnish. So that's been here for a few minutes. Up, on the other side. All right, now let's do the sides. Up. All right, so my piece of meat is brown. I'm going to put it out of the pan. We're going to put the garnish in, the, just the onions. Onions goes in. I'm going to mix the whole lot. And this is happening on low heat. Now you don't want to really burn anything. And we're just going to catch all the caramelized juices. And then add the garlic and the rest of the ingredients. Now immediately we're going to add the bay leaf the thyme and the garlic and some mushroom. Now, when you do a braise and you don't use stock, you want to have this coloring in the pan. This is gonna be very, very important to give flavor to your dish, okay? Now, it's been a few minutes. You will notice that I still have my brown here. It's not overly brown and I'm gonna deglaze now, of course, with my cider. Uh, so good glass. And I'm gonna catch all the juices, it's bubbling away. All right, so it's boiling, that's all what I want. I'm gonna turn my heat down to low. I'm gonna add just a few prunes in here uh, that I've got extra. Now you can be generous on the prunes, it's up to you uh, if you like prunes or not. And then put my meat on top. Before I put the meat in, I've turned my heat off totally and I'm just gonna grab my, my roast here. Uh, I keep on scaling a roast, but it's not a roast. <laughs> and I'm gonna place this in there. Now, as you can see, there is not too much liquid in here. I'm just gonna top up with the rest of the cider that I've got to clean that, that meat here. And that's it. It is now ready to be braised in the oven. Now, it's been 50 minutes in and I just want to check uh, my meat to see first off if I've got enough liquid and I want to turn my meat over, but I wonder how far I am. So a piece of pork has to be 70 degrees Celsius, which is about 160, I think, Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do is use one of those film reader. I'm going to plant it in. Wow, look at this surprise. 50 minutes in and it is already almost cooked. And the sweet spot is 70 degrees Celsius. I'm at 66. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to remove that, turn my meat over and cook it for another 10, 15 minutes. Just time for us to prepare the garnish. For the garnish, it's going to be very simple, uh, a pan with a little bit of butter and I'm going to pan fry the rest of uh, these uh, I think they're called oysters mushrooms with a bit of salt and pepper. My mushrooms are already just a little bit of golden color, that's it. I'm going to reserve this in a bowl and then we're going to pan fry some apples. Okay, all done. So all what we want is a little bit of coloring. We're not making a puree of apples. That's it. I'm turning my heat off here and I'm going to reserve this with my mushrooms and we're going to take the meat out of the oven. Look at this beautiful piece of pork. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it out of the sauce, reserve it in a tray here, cover it with foil and let it rest while we finish the sauce. 
And now let's talk about the fond de braisage. The fond de braisage is the braising stock. It's the cooking juices you've got here, but we've used to cook the meat. So this is infused with prunes, mushrooms, onion, cider, and of course the taste of the meat. Always taste first. Mm. It's very nice, very sweet actually with the cider and the prunes. So I'm just going to reduce it a little bit. It's a little bit liquid. If you want from here, you can adjust the seasoning and to make just a home style sauce. Or what I'm going to do after a bit of reduction is to add some creme fraiche into the mix and we'll be done. Now, if you want to go further, I'm going to do it, but you don't have to. Uh, it's the glazing. I'm using basically the leftover liquor that I had uh, to macerate the prunes here. And what I'm going to do is to baste my liquor that is very sweet. And I'm going to put this under the grill to glaze the meat and to give it a shine and to crisp up uh, the top a little bit. Huh? So it's not so good, so it's nice and crispy before we cut it, cut it open. But that's totally, totally optional. Uh, my meat is out of the oven and the glazing is finished. As you can see, it's bubbling away. It's got a nice crispiness to it. So I'm going to reserve it on the side and we're going to finish the sauce. After 10 minutes of reduction, uh, it's nice and, and syrupy in here. You see, it's still a bit liquid. I'm going to add a little bit of creme fraiche, maybe a good spoon. Now you can also use <laughs> A whisk, it's a bit better. Uh, and if you don't have creme fraiche, you can also add, I'm going to show you, add a bit of creme fraiche, but if not, you can use normal cream, uh, a little bit of it. And we're not going to render this too white. Uh, we're going to keep that brown color. Our sauce is finally done. Uh, I've added some cream, it's some nice color. The last test, of course, you taste the sauce. I think a little bit of salt. And that's it. You correct the seasoning and then you serve. Now for the service, usually when it's uh, a braised meat, uh, you, you put the sauce on the side and you put the meat on there. But because that's a bit blend, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a little bit of that sauce. Uh, and I've left all the mushrooms and everything in there. So just a base layer so I can put the, the meat on top and I'm then going to sprinkle some garnish over. All right, so let's grab the meat conveniently with the string for now. Right, so sorry, a little change of scenery here. I've added <laughs> some white background because the light today is terrible. Oh, I am. So what we do, we add a little, a few apples on here. Okay, and then some mushrooms. And we're going to finish with some, with some prunes. All right, so just family style. If you want, you can add a few uh, prunes here and there in the dish or what's left over. Uh, if you like that, you don't have to. But uh, as I said, you can use apricot if you want. And that's it. Yeah. To finish, of course, when you want to cut the meat, you can easily uh, snap them off and pull them off like this, one by one. Now, of course, to finish, I'm sure you want to see, uh, we want to see inside. So I don't know exactly where uh, we can go, which side. We can go this side, that's a bit uh, untidy. So maybe this side here is easier. So I'm just going to use a fork and just going to slice through this, make a few incisions, and then we're going to see. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Look at that. And this is how it is inside. Nicely cooked. And now you've got the nice prunes showing on the inside. This is a bit like a stuffing. So I'm just going to cut a piece for me and try it out. All right, so I've cut a few pieces, but I'll, I'll take a piece of uh, prune from here. A bit of sauce and try that first. Mmm, tender. Wow, the sweetness. You can really feel the prunes in there. It's a nice sweet sauce, but you know what? That technique, the, the meat, let me try the mushroom. Mm, nice, you see that sauce? Nice sauce. Mm. Oh, that glaze. Wow. Mm. Really, really nice. So let's recap. For a simple home dish, I think it's really great. That technique with the braising honestly works super well. And the meat is nice and tender. It's perfectly cooked. And this addition of prunes, if you like prunes, it's really special because it's different than just the salty thing with stock. And you really have this apple intonation flavor. And with that chestnut and apple liqueur, that is taking that dish to a whole new level. But all in all, an absolutely superb recipe. 
But all in all, that's it guys. This is how you braise a pork shoulder uh, that has been stuffed with prune. You can use apricot as well. And as you can see on the picture, the way to serve it usually, uh, it is more uh, the piece of meat in the dish with the garnish and you got the sauce in a sauce boat on the side. So people can help themselves if they want sauce or some people don't like too much sauce. It is really up to you. Now, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. If you've learned something today. Now, if you have any question, use the comment section in this video uh, to drop me a comment. And if you make this dish or anything that is braised like this, share your pictures on Instagram, hashtag French Cook Academy. And you can always also register on our Facebook page and become a patron on our Patreon page. And if you want to learn more about culinary techniques, French culinary techniques, don't forget our course, Get Started With French Cooking. Link in the video description. That's it for me. I see you all next week for another French recipe. Take care all. Bye-bye.